Video games have introduced us to amazing worlds, from distant planets in a solar system far away to the jungles of the Amazon. They've done a great job of making us feel we're playing in an actual fantasy world. However, fantasy type games, or high fantasy to be more specific, are probably the most common type of world we explore and play through. But which ones are the best? Hey Shackers, Greg here, and this week I'm counting down the top 10 best fantasy games. Now by fantasy, I mean the classic stuff you'd expect. Think Dungeons and Dragons, Orcs, Giant Spiders, Magic, etc. Now the rules. Games on this list will be judged by their fantasy setting, design of the world, atmosphere, and of course gameplay. The game also has to have a true fantasy feel, meaning if there are too many sci-fi elements like space travel, aliens, or too many modern elements like cars and phones, it won't make the list. Only one game per franchise as well, which is going to be insanely difficult since there are so many great fantasy video games out there. Well, let's sharpen our swords and raise our torches. These are the top 10 fantasy games. Arms and legs, one point. Torso's two, limb takes a hit. It's useless until healing's been cast. Parry, disarm, can be used once per melee. Unless you're up against a two-handed weapon. Grab your sword, I'll demonstrate. The Total War series is known for their historical themes and stories. However, this time, they went for broke and entered the world of high fantasy. Not only that, but it was the world of Warhammer, a game's workshop property with every fantasy trope you could think of. Dwarves, mages, spiders, dragons, vampires, zombies, and demons. This game had it all with beautiful epic battles that made the assault on Helm's Deep look like a skirmish. Total War Warhammer is a fantastic fantasy RTS, one of the best I've ever played. This game is vastly disliked. Personally, I blame the fact that people expected a certain type of game when you bear the name Castlevania. And even though the game had nothing in common with past Metrovania style games, the world and atmosphere were absolutely fantastic. Fighting off werewolves, vampires, and giants, to taming giant spiders to get around levels, and even the levels themselves were created in a fantastic way, showing off the diversity of this deep and rich world. No, the game's not as good as Symphony of the Night, but it's not trying to be, so why fault it for that? Lords of Shadows gets major marks for its design and atmosphere, which is executed flawlessly. It definitely deserves a spot on this list. Who? Who are you? I am Gabriel. I have traveled here seeking the Guardian of the Lake. You are from the Order? They sent you? How do I find him? He... He will find you. In the forest. Out of all the Zelda games, it may be the least liked, however the world and the enemies of Twilight Princess were some of the best. From getting confused in the lost woods, to the barren deserts and the mountain passes, the biomes and environments were some of the best the franchise had to offer, visually. From a pure art standpoint, it's the most dark and gritty Zelda game to date. And although I heavily considered Breath of the Wild to go in here in its place, I felt Twilight Princess had higher marks in different areas, and it's a great game that usually doesn't get the credit it deserves. <laughs>
This game brought with it everything that made RPG games of old back with modern flair. The difficulty was there, the deep story, and of course the classic isometric camera view of your adventurers. From massive exploration to building class roles, it had everything that defined the very definition of fantasy at its core. And better yet, it was a way for younger generations to experience the joy and excitement of playing those classic PC RPGs we all played in the 90s. So, Marius, at last I find you. Released in 2000, this isometric dungeon crawler was one of Blizzard's finest achievements, introducing players to a dark world rich and deep with fantasy lore and a wide variety of settings. From ancient cursed Egyptian tombs to dark mysterious caverns, the world was vast and alive, with five core classes to play as Amazon, Necromancer, Barbarian, Sorceress, and Paladin. Each felt unique and different and could be built in a very interesting way. The fun action combat and the quest for loot was enough to keep players entertained for years to come. And with the rumored HD remaster Blizzard is set to announce in 2017, everyone will get to experience this great world. Like them or hate them, MMOs are MMOs. And although the gameplay of World of Warcraft has remained same for the last 13 years, it's still going strong. A massive rich world gives you a ton to explore and experience. The multiple classes you can play as you'd find in any D&D campaign. Priest, Mage, Druid, Warrior, etc. And of course, the different races of the world itself. Blood Elves, Orcs, Humans, Gnomes, and others. Building your character, getting stronger, and selecting three different roles – DPS, Healer, or Tank – makes for plenty of diversity. The game also offers loads of memories, like seeing Stranglethorn Veil vale for the first time, or taking down the infamous Lich King. There's really no words to describe these certain events and experiences. Yes, WoW will most likely never change its core gameplay. And the grind is, well, a grind. But the world, enemies, and characters are a classic fantasy staple, and probably will be for a very long time. Dad, I've been sent here to bring you this. This sword can completely drain his mana. Dad, how did you get that? No time. Just take it. Here. How, how do you hand something from one player to another? Bring up your inventory screen. Control I. <laughs> Sorry, witch and witch lackeys. She's safe now. Who pay for this blasphemy? Known as one of the most iconic fantasy RPGs of all time, the game had a huge, diverse world, amazing characters, and all the classic fantasy goodness you'd expect, along with a great isometric camera view. It was the Baldur's Gate franchise that defined the I genre of PC RPG games in the late 90s, and it's known as the best RPG among PC enthusiasts. For good. The Chantry teaches us that it is the hubris of men which brought the Darkspawn into our world. The mages had sought to usurp heaven, but instead, they destroyed it. They were cast out, twisted and cursed by their own corruption. They returned as monsters, the first of the darks. They became a blight upon the lands, unstoppable and relentless. The world of Dragon Age is absolutely breathtaking. 
from the plains of the human kingdoms to the dwarven cities deep in the mountains. It's high fantasy at its finest. From following a major story quest that has you trying to prevent the end of the world, to awesome side quests that are simple and classy, like helping a town get rid of their undead zombie problem. You're fully submerged in this world of Dragon Age. Magic and monsters inhabit the world, and politics on a Game of Thrones level exist within the story, and you and your team of adventurers are at the forefront the entire length of the game. Sure, Dragon Age 2 was a letdown, and Inquisition made a lot of steps back in the right direction, but the first Dragon Age is by far superior. It's one of Bioware's best fantasy RPGs ever made. franchise has always been known for its interesting characters and deep lore, but The Witcher 3 took it to new heights, introducing a huge open world to many players for the first time. Yes, it was the third game in the franchise, however it explained in a way so new players didn't have to experience the first two to understand what was going on. From great classic fantasy monsters like vampires, werewolves, ghouls, and my personal favorite, giant spiders, the game has it all. A deep crafting mechanic is present, and attention to detail is needed as certain monsters may need to be weakened by poisons or tonics before handling them head on. The game is incredibly deep and takes itself very seriously, and makes you feel like a badass the entire time. So there are so many good fantasy games out there, so before we get to number one, here are some honorable mentions. games that can submerge a player into a world and make them believe, even for a fraction of a second, that it's real. And The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, does it in spades. From a massive world to explore, to creating your very own unique character to journey through said world, I've personally put over 200 hours into Skyrim. I've created a paladin, a frost mage, vampire thief, werewolf warrior, among others, and there's no limit to what you can play as or explore. It's the fifth game in the core franchise, and quite possibly the best fantasy game out right now. And with the release of the remaster on Xbox One, PS4, and PC, it's the perfect time to experience this classic fantasy game on any platform. What fantasy games did you guys like? Which ones did we miss? Let us know in the comments below. For more videos like this and everything else gaming related, you're already in the right place, you're on shacknews.com. The game that brought with it everything that made 90s RPG... 
RPGs? What's RPGs? 90s RPGs. Yeah, good job, Greg. All right, let's let's do this one again. 